DAX or data analysis expression is a concept that you should learn if you aspire to get the most out of Power BI capabilities or want to master it. These are a set of functions and operators which helps a user create new information out of existing data or analyze critical KPIs. If you're wondering how, then don't worry, I will take you through the basics of DAX today and then dive deeper into more advanced DAX function in future content. Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. So before we start, just a quick disclaimer, we'll be using Power BI to cover DAX related topics, but the concepts are the same if you would like to use Excel Power Pivots or Power Query. All right. So let's just get started. So today's video, I have divided it into several topics and each of the topic are individually important to understand. That's why I'm going to go each one of them in detail today okay we're talking about DAX today and an introduction to DAX so it's important to first understand how do we structure it so similar to how we write excel function DAX also has predefined functions and operators which are clubbed together or used individually to create your final DAX formula now this is an example of DAX function which sums two columns separately and then divide them to get the final result okay now here we have used the sum function, which is a predefined function within DAX, similar to Excel, with the division operator to get the final result. Okay. Now, since you're talking about operators, it's important to know the list of operators that are used in DAX. So here is a list of operators that are used in DAX. On a high level, we have arithmetic operators, comparison operators, text operators, and logical operators. So now where can we use DAX functions? So the next topic which we need to understand is where can we use our DAX formulas? So there are two areas or ways where how we can use our DAX formulas. First one is inside a calculated column and the second one is inside a calculated measure and we'll understand each of them separately. Okay. When you want your calculations to be done on a row level basis, then we enter DAX into a calculated column. Now let me explain this with an example. To understand this example, we'll first import the data set that we're going to use today. So we're going to use the same data set that we used last time, the PISA data, and the links will be in the description in, in case you want to follow along. So, so the requirement here is we need to create a new column, which will show the revenue for each row item in the data using the price USD column and the sales column. So in this case, since we need to calculate the revenue for each row separately and store it inside a table physically, we will create a calculated column. Now, usually while creating a calculated column, I prefer creating it from the data view because it gives us a visual preview of the data. However, there are other ways as well, which are as follows. So the first method is simply to go to the report view, go to the modeling tab and click on new column. The second option is to go to the table where you want to create your new column in the field section and click on this three dot icon and click on new column. Okay. And the third method, which I usually prefer is to go to the data view and right click anywhere on the table where you want to create the column and click on new column. Okay. So I'm going to use my preferred method here. And once you done that, once you clicked on new column, just enter this formula here. So I'm going to name this formula instead of column. I'm going to name this as revenue. And I'm going to use price and sales column to get my final revenue. I'm going to just simply write price and power BI has an IntelliSense feature. Uh, so you can just select it from here. You can either click it here or press tab. So I'm going to just click here and price multiplied by sales. Okay. So I'm going to use this sales column here. So the way DAX is formed is if you notice, it gives you the table name and then the column name. That's how DAX is structured. This is helpful because if the same column name exists in more than one table, then it will be easy for you to identify which column you want to refer. Okay. So just keep this in mind. Once you have entered the formula, press enter or click on this stick icon here and you have successfully created your first calculated column. Okay. Now 
coming to the second place where we can use a DAX is calculated measures. So when you want to do a calculation on an aggregated level and don't particularly want to store information on row level basis, then that is when you want to use calculated measures. Now in comparison to calculated columns, measures don't create physical values in your table, hence do not increase the file size. So that is an important point to note. Okay. Now coming to measures, uh, I'll explain it with an example. Let's say the pizza shop ran a 15% discount on each pizza. So what we need to do is we need to calculate the final revenue for all pizza sold using the price USD column, sales column and the discount percentage. Now in this case, obviously we'll be using a calculated measure because we don't particularly want to store the information in a table and instead want to calculate the aggregated value. Now measures will not be visible anywhere on the data view. Okay. So hence I prefer to use measures or create measures, uh, obviously in the report view, because since measures are not stored physically on a table, you would not be able to see the measures physically in anywhere on the table unless you drag that measure into a chart or a matrix kind of a visualization. Okay. So to create a measure, what we need to do is I come to the report view here and click on the three dots icon here and click on new measure. And to fulfill our requirement, what we need to do is first of all, we'll give a name. I'm going to use ref discounted here. Okay. And one main difference between a calculated column and a measure is while using a calculated column, you don't have to specifically run or apply an aggregation function with, with your column name, but with your measure an aggregation function is mandatory. You need to encapsulate your column name with a aggregation function. and my measure has been created. Now the final topic for today is implicit measure versus explicit measure. Okay. Now this is just a concept that you should keep in mind by default. When you drag a column into the report layout, Power BI automatically creates an aggregation measure, which is known as implicit measure. Okay. You might, might not have realized this, but let's say I create a chart here. So when I dragged sales and pizza name onto this chart, in the X axis, you must have noticed that it automatically aggregated my sales so that my output has a grouped effect on it. Okay. So it applied a sum function. I can also apply an average function, minimum function and all those functions. So these are predefined functions, which Power BI has. And when you drag a column onto the report layout or the, you know, the visualization pane, it automatically applies that implicit measure onto your metric. Now, on the other hand, explicit measure are the measure which we create by entering a custom formula in the formula bar, like we did earlier while creating the revenue and rev discounted columns. Now, both type of measures serve their own purpose, but explicit measures are much more flexible and help in building complex logics for custom analysis on your metrics and KPIs. So that's it for today. That was a short introduction into DAX and few important topics before we get into the advanced stuff. We will continue our journey into advanced DAX in future content. So make sure to stay tuned. And if you are liking my content, then please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, that would really help me out in the longer run. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.